Hello everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the top 21 books I want to read in 2021. Now I know I'm kind of clowning myself here because I said that I was only going to do like top 10 books I wanted to read in 2021 in my reacting to my top 20 books to read in 2020 video which I will leave a link to because I kind of roasted myself I barely read any of those books that I said I was going to but this year I have decided no I'll stick with 21 and I'm going to make it attainable by putting on books that I already own that are on my radar that I want to read and then like actually writing them down so that I try to reach for these books because last year I didn't write it down and I think that's one of the things that made me not read them. So I'm going to start off here nice and strong with two books that are already on my January TBR which I have posted last week so you can go watch that. I will leave a link to it up there and of course in the description. So the first book is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is an adult fantasy that focuses around a girl named Vasilia who lives in the Russian tundra and they have all of these folklores and fairy tales that they stick to and when she has a stepmother from the city that comes and kind of disregards all of these wives tales and all of the kind of rituals that they do to keep the spirits of the forest happy, bad things start happening and Vasilia kind of has to be the one to hold them all together and it you know goes from there i've heard it has something to do with like a russian death god which sounds really cool and of course this is very wintry so i want to read it while it is still winter so this is number one on my list the second book that i have is the starless sea by erin morgenstern and i mean just look at it it's beautiful i just feel like it's going to be something that i love and I, I'm already kicking myself for not buying the Waterstones edition when I could. But if I love this book, I'll probably also pick up the UK hardback. Even if it's out of print, I'm going to try and find one. But if, if I love it, I'm not going to try and get ahead of myself. Like, what if I hate it? Then I don't need to worry about it. But anyways, um, this is a signed copy too because I did go to the signing for this. I have read The Night Circus and I did really enjoy it. This one seems a little bit more up my alley. It is about this guy, Zachary Ezra Rawlings. And he basically like goes in search of this door that leads to another world and it has something to do with the be a key and a sword is like the big symbolism here i think there's like a story associated with each symbol i don't know it seems like very dreamy and whimsical and like a story within a story kind of layered thing perfect for winter and this is already on my january tbr so i really hope i get to it this year because i've had heard so many people with similar taste to me say that this will be something that I will adore. The third book on my list is House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, and this is a book that I was supposed to read, buddy read with some friends in December and didn't, so I'm hopefully going to start the audiobook for this one soon. And this is basically about a guy who's kind of like a magical social worker and goes to these orphanages and helps children with like special powers. That's a about all I know about the premise, I kind of want to go in just knowing that. I mean, just like look at the cover of it. It looks very whimsical and cute, and but I feel like it's going to pack an emotional punch, you know? So I can't wait to read it. And again, hopefully that's one I actually get to this year because I'm kind of looking to read that one in January, and that will be my audiobook. Audiobooks take me a little while to get through, so it'll probably take me like a month to read it anyways. All right, now that I kind of have my stuff that is on my January TBR down, I'm just going to go through my bookshelves and literally grab books at random that I know I should read. I didn't really like prep a list beforehand. I just I just know I have a lot on here that I want to read that I have not read yet. So number four is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan, which is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire. Girls of Paper and Fire is set in this land where there is a demon king and every year he takes a harem of girls from the most beautiful girls in all the villages and they are known as the paper girls and there are different castes depending on like if you're demon human half demon half human whatever and like obviously the humans are at the bottom of the food chain so these girls are brought to the palace to serve the demon king one year lei is chosen as the ninth paper girl which usually there's only eight because she has these really beautiful eyes they decide to take her and bring her to the king. However, her mother was also a paper girl and she never saw from her again after that. And so she kind of wants to seek vengeance. And she also kind of forms a bond with another one of the paper girls. And as they kind of all go through this really horrible situation together, this does deal with trauma and sexual assault. So like, please be aware before you pick this book up. But I think it really does deal with the situation very beautifully. And I am really interested to see like how the fallout 
is explored in the trauma, especially of these characters, is explored in the second book. This is Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho. This is the sequel to Wicked Fox, which follows a Gumiho, aka a Korean nine-tailed fox, and her name is Myung, and she's half human, half Gumiho, and so she tries to only eat bad men. However, after an encounter in the woods, she loses her Gumiho soul, and now she has 100 days to get it back, or else she will die, and she kind of forms like a bond with her classmate Jihoon who was there in the forest when she lost her bead and the events play out from there. It's very K-drama based so the pacing and the plot is very similar to that kind of style if you are familiar with K-dramas and this is kind of like a spin-off almost like I think it follows these side characters the goblin the handsome goblin and their friend Soman. Yes looking forward to this this is a probably promises to be a really cool fun follow up to Wicked Fox and I'm sure it will have that same pacing and drama that I loved in the first one. It is a book that I've had on my shelves forever, Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I picked this one up at BookCon. Is it signed? No. Actually, maybe I like had just met the author at BookCon, but I've heard about this book that it deals with political maneuvering in like outsmarting your enemy and not necessarily like combat action style, which I think is really cool. Theodosia, when she was a child, she was a princess, and then these enemies came over and took over her kingdom, and her mother was known as the Fire Queen, and they killed her mother and took her captive, and so now she's called the Ash Princess, kind of like, to shame her. And so she's been a captive in her own palace, and now she's going to use her smarts to outwit the Kaiser and take back what is rightfully hers. So, just seems like a very cool princess redemption story that I would like to read. Number six is A Blood Heir by Amelia Wen Zhao, and this is about a princess in the Cerulean Empire where they have a different like affinities and she has an affinity for blood. And basically because she has this really dangerous gift, she is framed for the murder of her father who is the emperor. From there, she must clear her name. So number seven on this list is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I mean, look at this cover. She's also written Uprooted and Spinning Silver, which would maybe be on this list, but I don't own the books yet, so I don't want to put them on this list. Um, and this cool like thing. So it's about this girl um, that goes to the Scholomance, and it's a magical school, but it's like cutthroat, like everyone's trying to one-up each other and like kill each other and stuff. However, she's this dark power that can like basically take out the whole school population if she's so desired. So yeah, she's going to try and like kill the monster that's lurking through the halls of the Scholomance, and that's, that's all I know so far, but magical school pretty much has me ready to go. Coming in at number eight is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell and this is a story that is said to be similar to The Diviners. My friend Melissa got me this gift from my birthday like two, two years ago so I really do want to read it. Modern day New York magic is all but extinct and in modern day times anyone that has magic if they cross over into the border of New York City they get stuck there. So Esta is a talented thief and she is tasked to be sent back in time to the 1920s New York and get this magical book that will free them from this imprisonment that they have and bring magic back into the world. Which just sounds time travel, New York City 1920s just sounds really cool to me. Next on my list is Caravelle by Stephanie Agarber and this is about a magical carnival that comes once a year and basically the audience is part of the spectacle and Scarlett and her sister Donatella have always wanted to go. However, this year Donatella is the prize and so Scarlett will do anything to get her sister back. It's supposed to be very magical and whimsical and really cool. So I've owned this series forever. I haven't read it yet, so I do hope to get to it this year. The next book that I want to get to is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is about a girl who in the 1700s makes a deal with the devil so that she will live forever. However, she is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she ever meets and until one day she meets this boy in a bookstore and he remembers her name. So it sounds like a really, really cool premise and I, of course, love V.E. Schwab, adore her and this book was on my December TBR, didn't get to it, but I do hope to get to it in 2021 because I love everything that V.E. Schwab has written. I have been on a fantasy romance kick for a while and so this is one of the books that I bought on that kick and that is A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova and this is like independently published, which is pretty cool. It has this really cool cover on it and this is a standalone fantasy romance but I think it's going to be in a series of like standalone fantasy romances. We follow Luella who lives in this village and basically like if you are chosen by the 
elves to be their human queen it's seen as a mark of death Luella like thinks that she's fine because she is past the age to be chosen as the queen and so she's living her life gathering herbs being a healer because of her gifts the elf king unexpectedly arrives for her and she's taken to a land of wild magic and she's forced to be a new queen to a cold yet blisteringly handsome elf king and then once she's there she learns about a dying world that only she can save i mean elf fantasy romances are right away Next up is A White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I do want to read all of Jennifer L. Armentrout's fantasy backlist this year. So this is going to be part of my like JLA vlog series at some point when I read this. And this is about Layla, who is half demon, half gargoyle. And so she has the really cool abilities. However, she cannot kiss anything with the soul or else she will kill it. And then this smart math demon comes along and he knows Layla's deepest, darkest secrets. However, like it's the whole soul thing isn't an issue. So like they can kiss and she won't kill him and it'll be great. So that kind of brings some tension because she also has a bodyguard, Zane, who is a gargoyle and kind of treats her like a little sister, but she has a huge crush on him. So in comes the drama that Jennifer L. Armitrout just writes so well. I can't wait for all like the angst and the pining, like JLA just does it so well. On that same note, I do also want to get to the Harbinger series, which is a spin-off of the White Hot Kiss series. So I honestly cannot tell you what this is about. I don't know. I don't know, but like it's JLA, so like just sign me up essentially. This is the sequel that I really wanted to get to this year, and that is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mar Marin, which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which is a book that I really, really enjoyed last year. Serpent and Dove follows Lou, who is a witch that has basically been living in hiding because her family of witches is out to get her, <laughs> essentially. So she's been living in the town of Cesarine, and there are these people called Chaucers, and they are part of the church, and they hate all witches, and they are witch hunters. However, after a public incident basically forces Lou and Reed into a marriage, they must learn to kind of come together. However, the fact of the matter is Reed was has been raised to kill Lou's kind, and Lou is really trying to hide from the people that are hunting her. So it's just like a good romance, like they are enemies, but they they have to be married. So it's like a lot of good tropes like that, like the there's only one bed trope, all that stuff. I really enjoyed it. And so I'm hoping that this sequel delivers and it makes this cover beautiful. On that note, we also have As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole, which is the sequel to There Will Come a Darkness. There Will Come a Darkness follows these are five people as they're set on a collision course to fulfill the prophecy that says that like they could either doom or save the world. It's way more than that, but it was such a well-written book and like each person of the five has like a different role in this upbringing and there's like different powers that you can have and it's based on like ancient Roman times, which I found really cool. I feel like I'm not doing this book justice in describing it, but anyways, it's awesome. Please check it out. I adore the series and I can't wait to get to this sequel because I feel like it's just going to blow my mind. Next up is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is an adult fantasy and we follow Rin who is an orphan and unexpectedly tests into the elite military school in her empire and when she's there she unleashes some shaman-like abilities but it also has a lot to do with Chinese history and there are some like historical happenings that this is based on that I do really want to do research on before I dive into this um, and read with Tiffany did a really good post explaining all of the different historical references that this book makes you have the historical context for it but I've heard it's just absolutely amazing so please go check out Tiffany's post as well as like I can't wait to read this book so I can kind of learn more about history while reading an awesome fantasy novel. Next up is Crave by Tracy Wolf and um, the cover looks like Twilight. Pretty sure they did this on purpose but um, this is about Grace who goes to an academy and she is a mere mortal among the gods. Basically everyone that is there are united in their hatred of her and then there's Jackson Vega who is a vampire with deadly secrets but there's a pull that pulls them together and uh yeah it could spell death for them all. I mean it just sounds like such like a cheesy vampire romance 
and I want to read it because it just seems really cool and the other covers in the series too are really awesome so yeah I want to get to this because I just feel like it's gonna fulfill my craving for vampire literature next up is Graceling by Kristen Kishore and they just released new covers that are absolutely stunning so I may need to donate this one and go get the new cover just like a bad a bad habit i feel like but i just love the covers so much and i've heard that this is such like a classic ya staple but so so good um this is about katza who has been able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was young and that has her grace her special gift and as niece of the king she's able to live with special privilege and then she meets prince poe who is graced with combat skills um and she never expects to become his friend and she never expects to learn a new truth about her own grace and a terrible secret that lies hidden far away. Um, yeah, I mean, sounds cool. New covers, I will put the new cover here. Love it, there is a new book in this series that came out this year, so I wanna read it. And here we have Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers, and this takes place in 15th century Brittany. Ismay escapes from the brutality of an arranged marriage and goes to the Covenant of St. Mortain, where the sisters still serve the gods of old, and there she discovers that she has been sired by the god of death and will be trained in his arts, aka become an assassin. So it takes her to the High Court of Brittany, where deadly games of intrigue and treason create impossible choices. And how can she deliver death's vengeance upon a target who, against her will, has stolen her heart? I mean, this just sounds right up my alley. So hopefully I get to it in 2021. I feel like my goal for 2021 is that I need to read the books that I own that already sound so freaking cool. Okay, this one is a chunker. This is Gone with the Wind. This is maybe a little bit ambitious because I usually don't read like huge books like this. It's an American classic and the reason I want to read this is because my grandma absolutely loves this book. She always talks about how when she was like literally reading it in like the 1950s when she was growing up, she missed her stop in the train and like ended up somewhere lost in New York City because she just like couldn't get her nose out of this book and the way she talks about it just makes me want to read it because it's like one of my grandma's favorites so I want to read it so we can talk about it and I actually did get her the same copy for Christmas so that she can reread one of her favorite books. This next book I own, I'm just too lazy to go up to the top of my bookshelf and grab it because I'm short. That is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I'm sure you've all heard of Miss Bourne at this point. I started this book in 2019 and never finished it so I really want to make sure that I get to it this year and this basically follows Vin who who is a street urchin um, however she finds out that she is a mistborn which means that you can like digest and use the powers of like all the different metals because this magic system is based on digesting metals which is really unique and cool and the whole premise of the story is what if the dark lord actually won when you were under his suppressive rule for thousands of years so I mean Brandon Sanderson is just like a fantasy staple so I want to read his works and for the number 21 that I want to read in 2021 is A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. I have been following along with an Ember in the Ashes series pretty much since the beginning and I completely adore it. It is in a Roman based empire. We follow Laia who is kind of in the oppressed class and she goes undercover into the elite military academy in order to gather information so that the rebels will free her brother. And then we follow Elias who is the top in the class at this military academy however he hates everything the empire stands for and these two cross paths and things happen from there and this series is just so cool has gone in directions that i wasn't expecting and then have really torn at the heartstrings and so i can't wait to see how it all concludes and with that there are 21 books that i want to get to in 2021 i really tried to pick books that i think i would be more likely to read because i already own them and they sound really cool and i want to read them whereas last year i feel like i maybe didn't pick books in that matter so yep those are some backlist titles that i want to work on this year and i'm gonna write them down so that i actually read them <laughs> and you guys have to hold me accountable please let me know down below in the comments some books that you want to get to this year that have already been released before 2021 and don't forget i um recently lost my patreon page so please check that out down below as of right now i'm just going to be posting some behind the scenes stuff um keep it really nice and simple and cheap but you know if you're interested please make sure to check it out um if not no big deal and with that have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one